Is there too much stress in your life? This could be a game changer. If you're zoning along on autopilot, you may miss the most beautiful aspects of your own life. Mindfulness is a love affair with life. Renowned scientist and mindfulness expert, John Kabat-Zinn. What mindfulness is saying is find your own way. Help yourself become more mindful. If you could get out of your own way, you could be yourself 24-7. Super Soul Sunday. All new Sunday, 11 a.m., 10 central, only here. So is mindfulness science? Is it art? Is it spiritual? It's, it's a gateway into the full dimensionality of being human oh, and being alive. I love that. It's a gateway into the full dimensionality of being human. And without it, you're just missing out. Well, you're missing a lot. Uh, you know, if, if you miss the look in your child's eye one day, you've missed it. Uh, if you've missed the look in your lover's eyes, the next day you've missed that. If you miss the beauty of sitting under trees, well, you've missed that. If you sum that over uh, many moments, many years, you may wind up missing the most beautiful aspects of your own life. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to blame for that? Well, I was too busy. Well, who, who, who is too busy? Who tells oneself, I don't have any time? When all you've got is time, all you've got is this moment. When John Kabat-Zinn began meditating as a young man, the practice was considered the product of the 60s counterculture. It wasn't considered science, but in 1979, he had this revolutionary idea to bring meditation and yoga to mainstream medicine. He developed a program called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction to help patients transform the experience of pain by changing their relationship to it. Over the last 35 years, John's trailblazing approach to health and healing has gone mainstream, bringing relief to countless patients suffering chronic illnesses and pain. Today, his eight-week mindfulness-based stress reduction course is available in more than 700 medical centers, hospitals, and clinics around the world. Let me ask you this. Do you have a morning ritual? Yeah, of course. What is it? Uh, I wake up and I do yoga and then I sit. Mindful. Drop in. Yeah. Drop in. Yeah. Okay. So waking up, of course, is what it's all about. I mean, it's about being awake, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's waking up and then there's waking up. So you can wake up and like drag yourself around. So brushing your teeth meditation, being uh -huh. in the bathroom, it's all like part of it. But then I go downstairs, I get on my yoga mat, and I have a routine that I've developed over the past 50 years that's just like what I like to do. And I do that mindfully. So it's mindful yoga. And then out of that, at when the time is right, maybe it's an hour, maybe it's 40 minutes or whatever it is, then I, I drop into sitting. And I usually sit cross-legged on the floor, but you can sit in a chair. And I, I just kind of drop into the body. Hmm. Body is like a really important part of this. Can we live inside the body? Because most of the time we don't. And then can we rest in awareness? Just rest, underline rest, in wakefulness, in awareness, in mindfulness, in heartfulness. And that's the practice. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do it. There are a lot of different details. But the most important thing, I think, for your viewers is drop in. Drop in on yourself and rest for a stretch of time. And then as you go about your daily life, mindfulness in everyday life. Check in. It's just like that. Once an hour, once, once a minute. Check in. Once a day. It's like you decide, but at a certain point, it's going to wind up teaching you. You know, we like to say, I'm, I meditate. You know, here's another one, like, I'm breathing, I'm yeah. meditating. Uh, or you'll say, I'm doing the practice. That's the way meditators talk. They tell you, I'm doing my practice. After a while, it doesn't feel that way anymore. It feels more like the practice is doing me. I am learning so much. It's like the world is teaching me everything I need to know if I only get quiet and drop in and attend. And Guess where we are? We're here. And guess when it is? Right now. It's now again. <laughs> it's right now. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. How do we balance the doing with the being? Yeah. Well, mindfulness is all about being. And the cliche goes, we're called human beings. But we actually have lost touch with that 
element of life. That's what we were doing sitting around fires as hunters and gatherers. Mm -hmm, we were mm -hmm. being. But now it's gotten so much more complex. What mindfulness is saying is find your own way. Listen to your own heart. Listen to your own, use the word longing. Longing. Listen to your own yearning. Because what we're really trying to do is live our life as if it really mattered. Because it does. And it does. And I like to say, more than you think, and then yeah. more than you can think. It's interesting. When people have a difficult time understanding it, I think your shower example is the best. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Mm. I like to say to people, okay, here's a little homework for you after we've talked about mindfulness. And, and it's, it's very important to keep in mind that mindfulness is not a concept, it's a practice. You have to actually exercise a certain kind of muscle. So I say, here's a little mindfulness homework for you. The next time you're in the shower, check and see if you're in the shower. Because you may not be in the shower, you, or you may have your whole Monday morning, nine o'clock meeting in the shower with you. <laughs> But you're not actually there under the water, feeling the water on your skin. You're off in the future or off in the past. So that's exercising the muscle. The more you do that, the more you realize, when I'm in the shower, I'm in the shower. When I'm brushing my teeth, I'm brushing my teeth. When I'm saying goodbye to my family, I'm saying goodbye to my family. It only takes a fraction of a second longer to do it with awareness. Okay, so everybody who's watching this right now, <laughs> the next time you get in the shower, you're going to think, am I in the shower or are you in the meeting or are you already check. on the freeway? Yeah. Check. And as soon as you check, you're back. And you, you, have, you have something you can do about it. If you are obsessed with some kind of thing, worried about how things are going to go that day or whatever, mm -hmm. that's all fine. Your awareness is big enough to hold it all. It's not like now you have to suppress all that thinking or the meeting in the shower. The knowing it is good enough. That knowing is what we call awareness. And then it's laughable. So you'll feel better because you'll you have a that. sense of humor. Don't, don't, don't you feel, I have some of my best ideas in the shower. And yeah. I think one of the reasons why, I, I actually, question, why so many great ideas come in the shower? Somebody said it's because of the warm water on the back of your, your neck. But I think it's also because when you're fully just in that moment, there, there creates an opening or clearing for other things to come through. And that's intimately associated with mindfulness, that creativity and imagination. When we get quiet, when we get still, when we rest, you could say, in awareness, our natural impulse to see connections that we didn't see the moment before uh, is unimpeded. And we can actually make these connections and realize them in ways that we might not have been able to do the moment before. So being in the shower, when you're really in the shower That's is, a meditation practice. That's a meditation practice. Yes. And a beautiful one. And guess what? Doesn't take any more time. So is it the same thing as meditation? It it's is a, a form of meditation. Okay. Because it's an easier an easier entry. Glide path. Or, glide, yeah. I like glide path. It's an easier glide path, I think, for people to accept, I want to be more mindful than I, I want to meditate. Because right. whenever we've done shows with Deepak and others about meditation, people are like, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not doing it right. Yeah. When in fact, how it, whatever is happening is what's supposed to be happening. Exactly. Right? This is the biggest problem. People think it. something's supposed to happen. Yeah, and I know it's not happening because I'm just sitting here miserable and bored and, yeah. and, and the breath is so stupid and why do I have to pay attention to that or, or my mind is so inflamed. And they think, oh, if I were really meditating, my mind would be a blank, my breath would be easy, I'd feel so wonderful. So the easiest thing for people to think of, uh, about mindfulness is that it equals awareness. You and I sitting here having a conversation, you know, the thought might cross one of our minds, well, when are we going to get down to meditating? The fact is we are. I love how you say that the negative thoughts often, that we often hear are not big enough thoughts. That's a big aha. Explain what you mean by that. A lot of the time, we think we know who we are. And we have a whole story about who we are. Yeah. And what that point is, is that the story is just not big enough. How much is the story about how beautiful you are? How much is the story about how large your heart is when it's at its uh, most content, yeah. Yeah. happiest? 
Ah, oh, yeah. Okay? So we write the story of how miserable I am, how much I need this or that, need more money, need more of this, need more of that, need more health. Uh, all of which may be true on a relative level, but it's just not a big enough story. So the story of like your luminosity, your beauty, the fact that there is more right with you than wrong with you, no matter what's wrong with you, Ooh, I love that, that doesn't come on the radar screen. But as soon as we bring it back, we remind ourselves. You see, that's the meditation practice. So are we as human beings, are we designed to just judge ourselves by the negative all the time? Because why is no, it that the, I don't think why so. is it that the negative thoughts have such an impact on us? Yeah, a lot of it has to do with our upbringing and our um, uh, education. That you know we are educated in a certain way, but we're not being educated how to be, only how to accomplish. So it's all about acquisition. It's about getting stuff we don't have. You say it's when we actually believe our thoughts that we spiral into anxiety and depression. Exactly, and as soon as you see that that depression is caused by what was called in uh, psychology depressive rumination, it's like a particular kind of toxic thought pattern that drills you down deeper and deeper and deeper into a black hole of nothingness. Yeah. And as soon as you realize that's a thought pattern, then the you that realizes it isn't part of the pattern. And you can actually- You can stop it, you can You disconnect. can write yourself a restraining order. You know, just, or like a soap bubble, you know, you touch a soap bubble, it goes poof. Thoughts, when you see them in awareness, when you hold them in awareness, it's like touching a soap bubble. It will just self-liberate. It'll go poof. And it doesn't spiral down into that chain of concatenation of depressive when thoughts. When you realize that you are not your thoughts, but the yeah. awareness of your thoughts. Exactly. Not the thinker, but the awareness. The awareness. Yeah. Beautiful. So what does it mean for us to cultivate mindfulness? It's actually very simple. It uh, is the simplest thing we could ever do, isn't totally it? It's totally simple, but it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the beauties of it, is that having worked now in the medical field for over 35 years, you're seeing that even though it's not easy, thousands and tens of thousands of people are willing to roll up their sleeves and actually cultivate it. So what mindfulness is, is a particular way of being in relationship to your life. And the place to start, of course, is the fact that we're only alive in this moment. The future hasn't happened yet. The past is memory and is over. But if you start to pay attention to where your mind is, most of the time it's not in the present moment. It's off someplace else, obsessing about the past or planning or worrying about the future. So what mindfulness is, is a particular way of paying attention and the awareness that arises from paying attention in that way. 